Hi, my name is Robert and I'm here at San Pablo Harbor. We live on a big 60-foot steel trawler boat where we also make carbon fiber violins. And for years now, we've been using a device called Electrosand to deal with our pee and poop problem. Well, the Electrosand is an interesting concept, but it's a finicky device, it's expensive to repair, and it's tricky to keep operating properly. I wanted something simpler and I wanted something environmentally conscious. So I started looking into composting toilets. And what I found out about composting toilets is that one, they're expensive. Two, many of them have overly complicated mechanisms and features I wasn't interested in. And three, I figured I could do a reasonably good job if I did enough research of making one. I wanted something that was very user friendly. In other words, I wanted a guest to be able to walk in, use the toilet with minimal instruction, push a button, and walk away. That's what I came up with, and I'm going to show it to you now. Remember, this is a prototype. It's a one-off. I've just been down in the head, cleaning out things, making room for the new toilet, so I thought I'd make this little video before installing it. Okay, what I'm going to do here is show you how to empty the toilet. I remove these two latches, open the toilet up. This is the pee catcher here. It's been female tested and works. Um, remember this is a prototype. There will also be a wall back here so the, the lid will fall back that way. We then lift out the stirring device, just like that, and then the entire bucket, you can glove up to do this if you're shy, the entire bucket lifts out. You can see the gear here in the bottom. If I make another one of these, I'll use, uh, uh, um, they call it tough gnaw or sailboard to do it. Um, hold that back, go over to your other handy Home Depot bucket, and you dump it. Now this stuff doesn't smell bad. It smells a little musty. Doesn't smell like poop um, because it's already begun to compost and the poop has already um, begun to break down. You simply drop this back in. It's very easy to get it into the right position. Drops right in. You take the stirring device. I'll hold this up so you can see it. This is all epoxy coated welded steel. Uh, this happens to be a threaded rod because that's what I had. And then I need to do a little adjusting here to make this easier to drop in, a little bending. But you set that in place. Uh, to recharge the toilet, and there is no poop in this medium at the moment, um, or I'd be wearing gloves. To recharge it, you simply dump in a new batch of media. And the stuff I have here is not the ideal stuff. It's the stuff I can find locally. I'm ordering some on Amazon to get the right stuff. Um, now, you see a couple of things here. These little blocks of Tufnol help retain the bucket in position when you close it. 
there is right down here a pee bottle. And I thought of all kinds of interesting solutions for how to get the pee out of the unit. Um, uh, this turned out to be the most reasonable and it's the one the sea head people use who make a composting toilet similar to this one. To drop it in, once again you got gloves on. You they run it up, it drops into a little box down here, close the lid and return the latches. The latches are kind of a nicety and aren't really necessary. And what this toilet is doing right now, you might be able to hear a little fan running. Um, it is sucking air from all around the opening here at the top with a small low amperage computer type 12 volt fan and it will run through a little tiny piece of ducting, about yay big, uh, and right out the top of the boat. Same thing with a house or a cabin. What that does is it ensures no odors. There is a constant change of air coming in from the room and going outside. So even though this stuff doesn't smell bad, it does not smell like poo when it's being in use. Um, um, even if somebody, you know, uses it and does something that smells really bad, that odor's gone, unlike a regular flush toilet, because all the time that they are using the toilet, um, the air is circulating out and out of the building. It doesn't smell bad outside, because again, this is a composting material. As soon as the poo is sucked down into the media, it's coated with the media and it begins desiccating, it begins drying out. Um, so there's, there's nothing in there that's percolating, um, unlike there would be if you simply put uh, human feces in a bag or something where microorganisms start growing and it's giving off gases and stuff. This process stops that cold, begins drying it out, and gets it ready for secondary composting outside of the unit. Having a peek inside, you can see a couple of things. Back here in the corner is the fan. Remember, this is a prototype. I put this together uh, so it would last, but without an eye towards beautification on the inside. And down here is the gear, which turns the gear mounted on the bottom of the bucket, permanently on the bottom of the bucket. This is, a, again, a piece of Tufnol uh, this stuff is nice and smooth, it wears very well, and there is another ring on the bottom of the bucket, so the bucket turns nicely without a lot of resistance. You may notice that's an 18-volt electric drill back there, running the drive gear. The reason for that is that I hunted all over for a gear motor to use. Uh, they're pricey and they're hard to find, and, and not hard to find, they're hard to size. I had to figure out how many foot-pounds of power I needed, um, and I started. Ended, I ended up looking at motors that were in the, you know, $150, $200 range. Uh, I had an idea. I grabbed uh, an 18-volt volt, uh, electric drill. It's running on 12 volts, and it works just fine. Um, it should last a good long time, and it was cheaper than any of the commercially available alternatives. I've also put it in there in such a way that I can always take it out if I decide to replace it with something else and it will still work as an 18 volt electric drill. Mm -hmm. 